darling. Oh, my dear, what a beautiful baby. I'd heard about your baby, but I hadn't seen her. Hello, sweetheart. Have you got a little smile for me? Have you got a little smile for me? Could you play peekaboo? Could you play peekaboo? Oh, my dear, she's got so much personality. She has her daddy's eyes. Yes, you've got your daddy's eyes. You look at me as if you thought I were an old idiot. Mm. Yes, you think I look like an old idiot. Oh, my dear, if only they'd stay that age. That's the way I adore them. Oh, oh yes, I have four, but mine are all monsters. Oh, they're monsters. I have no more babies. No, I have no more babies. <laughs> that makes you laugh. When I cry, then you laugh, you hard-hearted little creature. Here's my boy, Herbert. Come, darling. I want you to say how do you do to this lady. Take your fingers out of your mouth, dear. Isn't he enormous? He is. Yes, he's ten and a half. Darling, how did you get so untidy? Look at your tie under one ear. Your hair is covered with cinders. And look at your suit. Herbert, how could you get so dirty? Where have you been to get so dirty? The cellar? But you have no right to go to the cellar. But it's not, can't be more fun in the cellar. Listen, darling, stand still a minute. Where are you going now? To supper? But well, please remember, don't eat too much, darling. Well, you know what happened last week. Well, it will happen again and worse if you're not careful. No, dear, just a chicken sandwich and a glass of milk. No ice cream and no cake. Ah, <sighs> these parties. I'm a wreck. Well, we've been to nine this week. I believe we have five more to go to. I think it's all wrong, you know. I think it's just as wrong as it can be. But don't you think that nearly everything is wrong? And what are you going to do about it? That's my problem, and it will be yours, my dear. Are you going to make your children different from other people's children? Are you going to give them a miserable youth to remember? deprive them of pleasures which they consider normal? Or are you going to swim with the stream? I'm swimming, but I expect to sink very soon. What do you think about it, you wise one? I think there's going to be a reaction, you know. I don't think human beings were ever intended to lead the lives that we all lead today, including children. You think there's going to be a reaction, you sweet thing? My dear, I'm so... Darling, don't interrupt. Mother is talking. Go to your supper and don't bother me. I said no chocolate sauce. Now don't ask me again. I'm so glad to find you alone because I've wanted so long to talk to you about Walter, our dear friend Walter. You've heard, I suppose. Well, you know it's true. Alas, it's true. I can't tell you who told me that's something I never do. I never want to get other people in trouble. But on the other hand, I never say anything or repeat anything unless I know what I'm talking about. And I can only tell you that I have heard on absolute authority that our dear Walter has definitely decided, my dear. He has. He has definitely decided. Christopher, Christopher, come here to Mother. What have you on your face? What? Whipped cream? I should think you had, and why? You put it there to be funny? What was funny about that? That's the way Daddy looks when he shaves. Now, Christopher, stop laughing. That is not funny. If it were funny, Mother would be laughing. Mother loves to laugh. Mother is not laughing, therefore it is not funny. Now, stop laughing. It's not funny at all. It's very silly and very naughty. Look out, it's dripping. Well, of course it's dripping. Your face is hot and the cream is cold. Look out, don't put your hand on your face. You get it on your suit. Uh, darling, stop laughing. You're sputtering it at me. Now, go and get a big towel and rub it off. Oh, would you? Thank you. Would you kindly help my little boy? Just rub it all off. I'm so ashamed and sorry. Stop laughing, Christopher. It's very silly and very naughty. There's nothing funny about it. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything so funny in your life? Oh, that child of mine. He's a perfect circus. Isn't that a funny boy? Isn't that a funny boy? Oh, he's got such an imagination. I sometimes think that I'll not send uh, Christopher to school because... I think he's going to be an artist, a writer or an actor, you know. He's such a little individual. Well, my dear, to go back to Walter, I am just heartsick about the whole situation. Well, you know, I don't think it's ever too late. I think something can be done, and I think something must be done, and I think that you or I are the only ones to do it. 
I think you would do it far better than I, but I'm perfectly willing to try. I've spent hours thinking about it. My husband says to me, darling, what is on your mind? And I say, Walter, I can't stop thinking of Walter. Darling, don't interrupt. Mother is talking. I said, no, that's enough. Well, I feel, you know, dear, that in life, the simplest way is generally the best way. And I think that the thing to do is just to go to Walter and just say to him, quite simply, Walter, Walter, old man, do you realize that even... Oh, Herbert, you knocked the lamp over. <gasps> the lamp went crashing to the floor. Herbert, dear, stop running. Take your fingers out of your mouth. Go and apologize to Mrs. Miller. Tell her how sorry you are that you knocked the lamp over. Mrs. Miller, I'm absolutely mortified. Well, I saw my boy's foot catch in the cord when he was running, and I knew that was going to happen. I could do nothing about it. I'm so distressed. Well, thank you for being so sweet about it. You evidently understand children. Uh, thank you again. I'm so glad you're not hurt and the lamp is not broken. Herbert, dear. You take your fingers out of your mouth and t tell Mrs. Miller how sorry you were. Listen, darling, go and get your things together, your, all your lovely toys, and meet me here because we're going home. Because I say so, dear, not another word. Emily, come here. Yes, he did, but that's not your affair. Stand still. How did you get so untidy? Well, darling, you must not let the boys pull you around. And you've got chocolate sauce all over your dress. I told you not to take chocolate sauce. Now stand still and please calm down because we're going home. Oh, I know you don't. You didn't want to come, you didn't want to stay, and now you don't want to go, but you're going. Not another word. I want you to go and find the baby and bring her here and make all your lovely toys and bring... What? Emily, don't let me hear you say such things. You're a spoiled, selfish, ungrateful child. Well, I know, but the trouble with you is you have so many parties and so many pleasures you don't appreciate anything. How many times have I told you about the poor little girls who have no parties and have no presents and no... Fu well, now, listen, dear, we won't discuss that now, but I want you to leave everything behind after what you said. You're not to take anything home. You can't trade. You can't trade with Mary or Dorothy or anybody. You're not going to have anything to trade with. And some child more worthy will be given those lovely presents. Now, find the baby, dear, and meet me here. Not another word. Christopher, what is the matter? Well, darling... Your nose is not bleeding. Blow and I'll show you. Blow. It's not bleeding. Who struck you? Freddie Warner? Well, did you tease him or strike him before he struck you? Well, I'm going to see into this. Mrs. Warner, may I speak to your son? Freddie, dear, would you tell me whether my son Christopher hurt you or teased you before you struck him? He what? He grabbed your engine and your boat? and hit you on the head with a stick? Christopher, aren't you ashamed? And Freddy is a smaller boy. Do you know what I wish? I wish that he had hit you harder. That's what I wish. I wish your nose were bleeding. I'm ashamed to have to coward for a son. Oh, and look at Freddy, giving you his horse. How sweet of you, Freddy, to give Christopher your horse when he treated you so badly. But dear, you didn't want the old horse anyway? <laughs> well, we'll be in a better mood tomorrow. I think the children are so tired, they don't know which way they're going. You come to my house tomorrow, Freddy. Yes, and you may have anything that you want of Christopher's. All his favorite toys, anything that you want, and your own things back again. You certainly will. You will give him anything he wants. I'm just ashamed of you. Come on, baby, we're going home. What? Well, we're going right home. Children, will you please remember your manners? Now, say goodbye nicely and quietly. Thank Mrs. Clark for the lovely time you've had and all your lovely presents. Never mind, dear, just say so. We all have to do that, just say so. Goodbye, Mrs. Clark. I'm afraid that we must tear ourselves away. We have had the most perfect afternoon. The children are speechless with pleasure. They've just adored it. But I'm afraid I must take them away. Come, Herbert, dear, take your fingers out of your mouth, dear, and say goodbye to Mrs. Clark. Thank her for all your lovely presents and wish her a very happy new year. And Emily wants to say goodbye and thank you for your... Oh, yes, she's got lovely things. You've been so thoughtful. We've enjoyed it all. Where's our curtsy, dear? Christopher, say goodbye, darling. The other hand, you know better than that. The other hand. Say goodbye, baby. Well, we don't say very much, but we mean a great deal. And we've had a most lovely time. Goodbye and thank you again and happy new year. Come, my angels. Haven't we had a lovely time? 
Come on, darling. Emily, put that down, dear. I saw you take it. Put it down. No, you may not have it. Do what I say. Look out where you're going, Christopher. Herbert, take your fingers out of your mouth. Come on, baby. Come on, darling. That was Miss Ruth Draper depicting the uh, sometimes devastating social custom known as a children's party. Thank you.